Hi, so I've made a large scale EESD and I'm just leaving this to dry. And while I leave this to dry, I want to talk to you about this. Now this is something I first showed you about, oh I don't know, three years ago, something like that. And it's a fine example of the things that you put on the shelf until you get around to looking at them again, and this is one of them. And it looks a bit like an electromagnet, and if I touch it there, nothing happens, which is no surprise really, until I put a current through it. When I put a current through it, again, you're probably not going to be surprised if I put a quick pulse current through, and suddenly it has become magnetic. But there is one thing to notice about this. Let me disconnect it. When I disconnected it, it remains magnetic. Not like an electromagnet at all. Let me just connect it up again for you. Now I'm going to swap the leads around so then reverse charging it if you like and I just touch it and it loses its magnetism. This is a switchable magnet, not an electromagnet. All I actually have to do is pulse a current through that coil. And when I pulse a current through that coil, it is either non-magnetic, which it is now, or pulse it and suddenly it's magnetic again and it retains that quality without the current going through. I only have to pulse it. Once it's pulsed, I can disconnect it totally and it remains in the state that it was actually in. Now that's very cool, but let's go and have a discussion about what that actually means. So let's have a bit of a better look about what was going on in that device. Now what we had were two magnets side by side and let's say for argument's sake they're north, south, south, north and we had our keepers on that. Now in that situation the magnetic flux is going to follow the path of least reluctance and it's just going to go there and now. That's why we couldn't observe the magnetic effect, it was all kept within the keepers. Now we had a coil around it and we put a charge across that coil at a brief moment. Now these two magnets are different materials. This one's a neo and this one's an alnico. A neo is a hard magnetic material. Putting a brief pulse through it like that is going to do nothing. The alnico is a soft magnetic material, so if we pulse that in the right direction, what will happen there is that that will change polarity, so that will become north and that will become south. When that happens, the path of least reluctance is actually outside of the keepers, and our field goes like that. So by pulsing it, we could suddenly have that magnetic effect. Then when we reverse that pulse and we reverse the poles again, again, the least reluctance path is in the keeper, and so we lost the magnetic effect. Now we only had to do that one by pulsing it, we didn't have to apply a constant current that you would have to do when you used an electromagnet. So it's kind of like an electromagnet, but actually it switches the um, polarity of the alnico and takes account of the path of least reluctance so that the field is either inside or outside of those keepers. And that's a really interesting device. Now it's interesting in itself, but what can be done with it? Well, let's say we have a situation like this. And we fix this, it's not like a rotor, but here we have a rotor with teeth in it. Now, if we turn that on, then that will be pulled to top dead centre of that, again, because it's path of least reluctance. And once it gets there, if we turn that off, but turn that on, then we'll be able to pull that one. Again, stopping it, turning it off, turn that one. And we can make this whole thing rotate continually by changing the switch in here. Now, this is called a switch reluctance motor. If these were just electromagnets, that's what a switch reluctant motor is. By switching these in series, we can use the path of least reluctance to rotate this outer rim around there. Now, these switch at about a microsecond or so. This takes a time. If the revolution here is quite low, 
lower than the switching speed of these, then we actually should be able to get an advantage out of that because instead of having to power these as electromagnets continually, we only have to switch them on and then let the rest of the work, the um, mechanism do the work for us once it gets there, switch them off again. So we should have some kind of efficiency saving there, at least that's the theory. Now, this obviously is beginning to look like a um, motor and that's exactly what we're planning on building is we're planning on building this magnetically assisted switch reluctance motor and using it with the ESD to drive a vehicle or at least that's the plan and that's why we've been cutting discs because we're actually engaged in building this right now. There we go nice and magnetic and pulse it and it loses its magnetism and we can use that as we described on the board to build a motor. And the idea is that this, this motor, this magnetically assi uh, assisted switch reluctance motor, will have some kind of advantage over an electromagnet or just a straightforward switch reluctance motor. We should be able to get some kind of advantage with that, or at least it's possible. And we're going to be looking at that by building that motor. Now I could play with this all day because I think it's absolutely fascinating. I've got to make sure that it's actually connected. There we go. Now, what's in there, as I say, are just um, two magnets. I'm now looking for them. Ah, two magnets. So we've got a Neo and an Alnico, coil. And we put them together and wrap them in that coil of wire. Let me show you how So to make this is really easy. All you need are two magnets, one neodymium magnet and one Alnico magnet. They're about the same length. These are 2.5 centimetres by 4 millimetres. A little bit of scrap steel. This is some laminations from a transformer. And you want to cut off about 1 centimetre here, 1 centimetre here. Glue these two magnets together. The orientation doesn't matter. And then spot glue a little bit of the steel onto the end of it. And that's what you'll end up with, something that looks like that. Now all we need to do is take some copper wire. The gauge doesn't really matter. And bung a couple of hundred turns on that and just wind it on. And there it is finished and connected up to a power supply. You can use a battery if you want. At this stage, it won't have any magnetism, or it shouldn't have any magnetism. We don't know which way around it's connected. Doesn't really matter. If you can't get it working on the first try, just swap it around to the other one. So let's give it a bit of a zhuzh of power. Let's see if we've got any magnetism coming out. And we do, there we go. So now if we reverse those again, Give it a little pulse. Oops, make sure it's connected. And give it a little pulse. And then it loses its magnetism again. So there we go. Pulse it. It's magnetic. Swap it and pulse it again. It'll lose that magnetism. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting, and thank you for watching.